unseasonably warm in Dayton, Ohio. It's been delightful these last couple of days. Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, Texas Southern, both practiced yesterday. Here are the starting lineups for the two teams. Bryson Gresham for Texas Southern, guys. He has really come on and is healthy as this season's moved on. Yeah, I like his shot blocking ability. Played for Kelvin Sampson over at the University of Houston. And um, they think he's made a big difference with their team that if they're able to win this game, he, they think he can, he can help in the next yes. round. Unlike when they played Michigan last year, they didn't have much size. Let's check in with John Rothsey. John, welcome to the NCAA tournament. Welcome, Tom, and happy holidays to you and the rest of our crew. And we've got a tale of two teams tonight here in Dayton. Texas A&M Corpus Christi, a brand new team under first-year head coach Steve Lutz. Eight junior college transfers on the roster. Most of these players recruited via Zoom because of the pandemic. Conversely, Texas Southern under Johnny Jones has NCAA tournament experience. They went a year ago. Experience against inexperience here tonight in Dayton, Tom. Yeah, no doubt about that. There is Johnny Jones. The Islanders wearing their black uniforms. We asked Steve Lutz, are you wearing the black again because you wore them to win the championship in the tournament? He said, you know what? I don't know, but let's go with that. Joe Lindsay is the referee, and he is at center court letting the uh, players handle the basketball one last time. And here we go. It's been more than a... A thousand days since we had the first four last in Dayton, Ohio. This building has been revamped since the last set of games. It is gorgeous. And college basketball will take center stage for the next several weeks. March Madness is underway. And boys, we're going to see a lot of man-to-man -man defense. And both these teams rebound well. And there's the first turnover of the night. As the Islanders go quickly into transition, Murdoch's baseline no good, and the rebound is pulled down by Texas Southern. Yeah, rebounding is going to be a big keep. Both coaches talked about it on yesterday. You know, they felt whoever can control the boards can control the game and take care of the ball. Texas Southern started off with two consecutive turnovers. Yeah, Mushila with the pick. That's the second steal on back-to-back -back possessions. And Johnny Jones is not fooling around. He's already got a, a new player at the scorer's table in John Walker. It will be physical, too, right, guys? I mean, that's what we anticipate. Murdix gives it off to the corner, short three, and the rebound by Texas Southern. Well, early here, the Islanders' pressure defense has been on point. Good help defensively. Closing out on jump shooters. And then the ability to push the ball with speed. Here's Murdix high stepping, gets it outside, and then they drive to the basket. A lot of contact, but the first bucket of the night goes to Jalen Jackson. Yeah, Jalen Jackson. He he's like the engine for for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. He's the guy that plays bigger than his size and being able to play through contact. Okay, he spent the last two years in North Texas, didn't play a whole lot, and count the bucket and the foul. All right, let's take a look at this drive by Jalen Jackson. Yeah, he's a really strong right-handed player. Nice move by his teammate, but nice shot fake here. Get to his strong hand. Almost hit the top of the backboard. And this foul is on Murdix. That'll be his first, team's first. And it'll send John Jones to the free throw line. He's just 86% from the free throw line. I like the maneuvering at a pace where he avoided picking up the offensive foul. Yeah. Comes up short on that free throw line, so that's your fault early here. <laughs> I know that the free throw jinx. <laughs> I got to get things out of the way. Yeah, better early than late. That's right. Hey, both John Jones's mom and dad who are present here tonight. Dad's coaching and mom's right behind them. They're going to be upset with you for jinxing them on that free <laughs> <laughs> It'll be Islanders basketball, 17 on the shot clock. Moving the basketball around, shot clock is out under 10. Along the baseline, shot clock is at two. Jumper is good. From the corner. Well, you can see this Islander team is in rhythm. Uh, offensively tenacious. 
ball pressure defensively as well. That's why they've been successful. Good answer. Yeah, Walker with the answer of the Mushila three. We're tied up at five. Yeah, the Texas A&M transfer. Uh, he's a kid, man. If he's making his three-point shot, he's going to be hard to guard. Well, Gresham there keeping him his hands up to block that shot. Off the high screen, Lawson gives it off to Walker. They kick it back to Lawson for three off the side of the rim. Good check out on the boards by the Islanders. Yeah, both these coaches said we've got to make sure that there's not a second shot for each team because they do crash the offensive boards. Baseline jumper. No, oh, it's good. It took a nice friendly bounce. So Simeon Fryer, the senior from Philadelphia, connects on his first bucket. And yeah, Fryer with the soft touch. The iron was kind. Well, there's another turnover. That's the third for Texas Southern. What a frenetic pace. Yeah, really. Jackson gave it up. That three is no good. Mushila is fouled. It'll be Lawson. It's his first. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. Along with Avery Johnson and Steve Lavin, John Rothstein, I'm Tom McCarthy. 7 5, 16 42 to play here in the first half. If you notice with Texas A&M Corpus Christi, they're making it a point to try to bring Grissom out on the perimeter. Yep. They don't want him in the paint. And that gives them a chance to drive a little bit too. Tennyson lost control of that one. Here come Texas Southern. The three attempt from John Jones, no good, too strong. And the battle for the loose ball, the Islanders have it. Into the open floor, it's Tennyson. High stepping to the basket, count the bucket, and the blocking foul. Again, Defense creating offense, stops and shutouts leading to runouts, and passing the ball, dancing it through the pass allows the Islanders to get down the floor. And Tennyson with the impressive finish, playing through the contact, good concentration, keep eyes on target, step into the free throw line for the old fashioned three point play attempt. Yes, yeah, so he'll go to the line 85%. Substitutions, Keys checks out. Uh, the free throw is no good, in and out. You know what's impressive, Avery? Neither team looks up tight. Sometimes big stage, big moment. Uh, it takes, you know, a couple minutes before you feel relaxed. I mean, right out of the gate, here comes Tennyson again off another turnover by Texas Southern. Yeah, I think Texas Southern, they're a little bit sloppy to start the game. You know, that's their fourth turnover. You know, and A&M Corpus Christi, you know, they, they don't have any turnovers or, or one turnover, so. And if they block shots, that's like a turnover. And that's what I love about when you're talking to Coach Lux, that they like to block shots and keep it in play. Yeah. Well, again, you know, when you talk about Texas a and Corpus Christi, nice Euro step here by Tennyson, getting in transition, and nice job passing the ball ahead. Fantastic body control. Texas a and Corpus Christi off to a uh, five for nine start. They have forced five turnovers so far. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. Sold out here at UD Arena as the Island University will inbound along the baseline. The defense by Texas Southern trying to slow them up a little bit. Trying to direct traffic up top. Brinson with the shot clock under 10. Into the paint, behind the back with his dribble, kicks it back outside. Shot clock is at three. I'm not sure if they realize it. Jackson fadeaway jumper short. Well, the rebound is taken by P.J. Henry. Henry kicks it outside for Jones for three, no good. And Tennyson will bring it up the floor. Another team particularly strong from beyond the arc. Boy, that's a good force inside. Now, early offense by the Islanders. They get down the floor quickly and get organized. And high percentage decision to put it down low. 
So the foul is on Gresham. That'll send uh, Faramade to the free throw line. He's 41% from the free throw line. And the first of two. No good. That kind of looked like 41%. Yeah, and, and a big key, obviously the regular season, we, we see this all the time, but especially in conference tournament play and now in the NCAA tournament where it's either win or go home, when you have a poor free throw shooter at the free throw line, you have to rebound this basketball. It's really deflating when you give up an offensive rebound on the free throw line. Yeah, free throw step in, put a body on your opponent carve out some space and rebound as Texas Southern does on that missed free throw. And interestingly, even though they missed two free throws here, their strength is getting to the foul line. The Islanders, uh, as impressive as any. Uh, ninth in the country yep. in free throw attempts per game. John Walker's three is no good, so they're scoreless for the last three minutes. It's 11-5, Islanders on top. Verdicts has it knocked out of bounds. It'll remain Texas A&M Corpus Christi ball. But even though Texas Southern missed that shot, since it wasn't a turnover, you can get back and get your defense in. Yeah, there's it's, no defense for live ball turnovers. Right, there's no defense. <laughs> Not in any level. AAU, college, pro, it doesn't matter. Allen is going with the... Bigger front line yeah, and big pays time, off. and Faramade is able to slam it home. He brought it home with a little shaka. And it's 13-5, Texas A&M Corpus Christi. That's the versatility and flexibility and personnel the Islanders have. They can go big, small, quick, great take. Yeah, Etienne went right to the basket, high off the glass for that bucket for Texas Southern. It's the first bucket in the last three and a half minutes. Again, the winner moves on to face Kansas in Thursday's first round. Tennyson for three, no good. And the ball goes out of bounds, so Texas Southern will take it over. Excellent pass here to Faramadi. Open floor, pick and roll. Can't hug the weak side. No shrink in the floor that time by Texas Southern. They were hugging the shooters. And Texas A&M Corpus Christi, they'll make you pay if you don't shrink the floor. Farmani's done a nice job since the conference tournament season began. Seven and a half points, nearly five rebounds. It'll remain Texas Southern basketball. And one thing uh, on that last play also, you gotta also know who's the nine shooter or who's the lesser of a three-point shooter. Who you can help off of. Yes, that's where scouting reports really come in play. Gilliam inbounds to Etienne, and he is fouled going up. And that'll be a three-shot foul. Yeah, Etienne there needs to close out on balance with high hands. You want to contest the shot, but be on balance. The follow-through of that contest led to the foul, even though the ball goes off the side of the backboard. Clunk. So Etienne to the free throw line for three. No guys in a situation like that. It's also about the guy that's defending the inbounder. Sometimes coaches want the inbounder to protect the basket. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and then jump to the corner. Second free throw is good. Don't miss the impractical Jokers like you've never seen them before. The Jokers return with a big new episode with special guest Eric Andre, April 2nd after NCAA coverage on True TV. Third attempt is good. He made all three. He's got five. And just like that, Texas Southern has climbed within three. It had been an 8 0 run for the Island University before this 3 0 run. Faramade is fouled again, and he'll get a couple of free throws. Second consecutive time, Texas Southern has been burned by this middle pick and roll, spread pick and roll. So Faramade back to the free throw line where he was 0 for 2 before. Oh, that form looked really nice. Yeah, took his time. Yep. Knees were flexed. Ball came off the middle three fingers, creating that good rotation. Lushila checks back in. 
as Fryer checks out. And now the sec second attempt. That one a little too hard off the back of the iron whistle blows, and I believe we have a violation. That violation is going to go against John Walker of Texas Southern. Yeah, it looked like he started in the lane a little bit too fast. <laughs> Off balance, that left foot. And that helps. Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Johnny Jones has done a wonderful job in four years at Texas Southern. Talked about being the 16th seed because he's the 16th seed more often than not. He said, you know, I don't get caught up in that anymore. He goes, I, I just take care of what we can take care of. Yeah, very poised temperament and bearing on the sideline, a teacher. Rossus into the paint. Hook shot is good over the top. That was an athletic move. Rossus, that's his first bucket. Make it a three-point game. Yeah, decisive on the catch. No hesitation. Goes right into the jump hook. Speaking of decisive, that three is no good. And Walker with an easy rebound. Here come Texas Southern the Tigers in transition in motion three. Too strong. And that's what makes them a special team and why they're keep back in the NCAA tournament two years in a row. You just you don't know where the offense is coming from. Sometimes that's bad in the last two minutes of the game because you Coach Jones has so many options. Nice move here. Yeah, Ross is using that dribble effectively and gathers and gets a nice release on the jump hook. Good lift. I don't know if Coach Lux uh, agreed with that travel call. But a three-point game. Texas Southern can tie this game up if they can can a three-pointer. Jumper from the elbow is no good by Rossis. Here come the Islanders quickly up the floor. Under 12 minutes to play here in the first half. Murdix down toward the baseline, leans off the glass. His man left him, and that's his first bucket. Murdix with the jump stop, the ability to slam on the brakes there, looks around, sees the opening, and says, why not? Little mid-range stop and pop game. Lost art that mid-range. Jalen Jackson's pass down low. They kick it back up top. Murdix drives to the basket, cannot convert. That was a good drive. Nice try with the left hand, and the Islanders are doing a nice job of playing inside out. Get, they want the ball to touch the paint first. Rosses with his second bucket. He's got four. I like the way Rosses there crept behind along the baseline in the shadows behind the defense and able to get himself a high percentage look. Breakdown defensively by Texas Southern. Teams are combined two for 11 from beyond the arc in the early going. Shot clock under 10 and the lean off the side of the rim is no good by Keys. And when Texas Southern shot blockers on the bench, got to convert those shots inside because yep. you're not going to get many of them. Yeah, he's about to check back into the ball game as Walker's able to convert. That's his fifth. Nice pass by Rosses there. High low action. Tandem two man basketball, very effective. There's two straight breakdowns by the Islanders, allowing interior point blank range shots. Good force along the baseline. Ball is tipped around and saved by Mushila, and he's able to get it in. And that's what Coach Les was talking about. He's patterned his offense a little bit after his time. You know, Creighton, Big Ten motion. They're just not a pick and roll team. Murdix cannot convert, but there to clean it up is Fryer. He lays it in as the putback is good. And a timeout called by Texas Southern. Five point lead for the Islanders. 9.49 to play here in the first half. All right, Avery, you were a ball handler during your playing days. What's going on here that leads to the Islanders' points? Was well, really outstanding uh, defense here by Texas A&M Corpus Christi. So you see them right here, this help. This is when you have more of a wall and not a curtain. The help side man comes in, they stick with it, and now they're off to the races. And then also, they don't give up on the play, follow it, 
offensive rebound score, really excellent defense, and even better transition offense. Yeah, always assume it's a miss, not a make. Fryer there to put it back in. Jordan Carl Nicholas, his first bucket as he dove to the basket on that drive to make it a three point game. Texas Southern has settled down some now and found a rhythm of their own offensively. And less turnovers of late. And Friars fouled on the high post. Jordan Gilliam is called for that foul. Well, it's the first of four here in Dayton. And so far, no cobwebs. Just a whole lot of action. Texas A&M Corpus Christi has a 21-18 lead over Texas Southern. Moments ago, John Rothstein caught up with Texas Southern coach Johnny Jones. Well, Johnny, I've gotten a couple of easy opportunities. How do you take away their opportunities in transition moving forward? Taking care of the basketball. We've got a, a few ill-advised turnovers on the other end. We need attempts and not turnovers. If we're getting shots at the basket, we're great in our half-court defense, but it's very difficult getting back when you turn the ball over in the open floor, and I think that's where they um, were able to uh, execute down on the other end, shooting quick, getting quick baskets. Thanks. Have a great rest of the half. It is loud here at UD Arena. Both bands are into this game just as the fans are. It's sold out. And they're expecting sellouts throughout the course of March Madness around the country, which is great to see. Two on the shot clock. Pull up jumper is no good off the front of the rim by San Antonio Brinson. Etienne gave it off to the corner. P.J. Henry, entry pass inside. Carl Nicholas into the paint, moves around, too strong off the glass, but Gresham's there to clean it up. Yeah, sometimes the best offense is a missed shot when you got the bigs to play volleyball at the rim, and there's a classic example for Texas Southern. Yeah, Texas Southern guys, 10% of their points come on putbacks like that, and Gresham picks up the, the block. His shoulder is healthy, which means he's getting better. Yeah, because he had shoulder surgery after last season and uh, took him a little bit of time to get back in rhythm. But boy, he's playing some of his best basketball. Went to the uh, Final Four with the University of Houston, also was at UMass. Shot clock is under 10. B.J. Henry calls out the offense. Pull up from 17, it's blocked and pulled out of the air by the Islanders. Good defense there. By Jalen Jackson, the contest on the jumper. Fryer leaves it off to the top of the free throw line for Keys, and his jumper's no good. Etienne up the floor slowly. Off the high screen, way downtown, and it's good. <laughs> oh, that's the first lead of the night for Texas Southern. And Etienne from way downtown. Etienne with too much daylight, able to window shop over the top and launch that bomb from long range. He has almost 12 points per game in the last 19 from the corner. Henry gives it up to the free throw line. Diving to the basket is Carl Nicholas, and he's fouled going up. That'll be against Keys, a two-shot foul. Etienne, one of the things Coach Jones said about Etienne, when he misses shots, it does not affect his confidence. <laughs> he loves to put it in ocean. Texas Southern has taken the lead over Texas A&M Corpus Christi moments ago. John Rosti uh, caught up with Steve Lux, the head coach of the Texas Islanders. Texas Southern's come back to take the lead, Steve. How do you have to counter that now moving forward? Well, we've got to do a better job defensively on the glass. They've gotten a couple offensive rebounds and a couple easy putbacks here in the last three or four possessions. And then when we do get the rebound, we're not getting out and running in transition. We've got to do a better job in transition and get some easy baskets. We've not done a, a great job in the half court of moving the ball enough. So, um, you know, we've, we've got to start it on the defensive end, though. Thanks. Have a good rest of the half. Thanks. All right, John, we appreciate that. Jordan Carl Nicholas to the free throw line where he missed both. And Tennyson, with the rebound for the Islanders, gets it off to Murdix. Lap, how hard is it when you have so many players coming in and out of the game like these two teams do? You need your assistants are helping as well, uh, but the head coach has to have a sense or a feel. Uh, you know, just intuitively knowing his team in terms of the combinations 
that should be on the floor because sometimes you're looking for some offense some defense ideally you want both but the reality is certain combinations are stronger in one area more than another there's the steal by Texas Southern Etienne and he's fouled at midcourt Joe Lindsay the referee made that call and Tom I agree with Steve but also when you have two teams that are so evenly matched like both of these teams you got to be able to handle the up and down cycles of, of the game if you're if you're in an up cycle you don't want to be too cocky and too arrogant and too careless if you're in a down cycle you got to hang in there and fight through adversity and whomever's able to do that that's the team that's in the last three to five minutes that'll take over this game but this is going to be a dog fight throughout this game Gresham doing a little high low with Carl Nicholas and a foul is called as he was heading to the paint yeah, that foul is going to go against Miles Smith number two well, dangerous to spin dribble but Jordan Carl Nicholas able to pick up the foul on that slap downward on the ball and Carl Nicholas takes the inbounds and gets it off the glass and See, that's all the special teams I know we're playing basketball yeah. but that's the special <laughs> team situations in basketball underneath out of bounds getting the quick score and Carl Nicholas with the block along the baseline and quickly Texas Southern gets in motion lost into the basket can't get it to go well, there's been a concerted effort by Texas Southern to put the ball down low as well and they've crawled back into the game as a result and they're not turning the ball over they had the four early turnovers but since then only one and so really have found a nice rhythm Texas Southern is number one in the SWAC and shot blocking for a reason <laughs> yeah they average five a game Gilliam with the missed shot and now Murdix brings it up the floor. He'll quickly go into the offensive set, right to the glass, off the rim, no good, and a foul underneath. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, the best Coke ever, like the GOAT. Jordan Carl Nicholas called for his first foul. It's the sixth team foul. Well, Sheila checks back in for the Islanders. Also back in is Simeon Fryer. Shot clock at 20. As the Island University inbound along the baseline. There's Murdix trying to use that screen. And he loses it off for Faramade, and he has it stolen away. Here comes Etienne into the open floor of the alley -oop, and they cannot convert. It was unfortunate that Walker was just a little too far under the basket. Yeah, those type of lob plays, they, they really energize the team, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just confused that Texas A&M Corpus Christi, they still don't want to attack the shot blocker. Yeah. They've had, what, two block shots in a serious contest, three out of the last four possessions? And when you're attacking a shot block, I know when I played, and I got downhill and I saw a shot blocker. I'm really thinking about making a play for my teammate. How can I pump fake, elevate, make a short pass? You gotta defuse those guys' uh, ability to protect the basket by getting your teammates involved. Four point lead. What do you got, John Rossi? Well, Avery's talking about the shot blocking. Bryson Gresham alone has blocked 65 shots this season, the most ever in his career prior, 48. He also had five in a SWAC title game mm. against Alcorn State, Tom. Well, Carl Nicholas could not convert. Here come the Islanders. Four and a half to play. They go down low to Farmade, and he's able to lay it in. 25 23. With some blows, and it's going to be Texas A&M Corpus Christi ball. Jalen Jackson comes back in. On that last possession, fellas, Faramade gathered. He caught it. He also had an angle. There was no one between him and the basket. Going back to what you were saying, Avery, uh, if you don't have an angle and you don't have the size advantage and you're going against a shot blocker, you don't make contact. I've got to give it up. Smooth touch. Yeah. Buttery. Bottoms. Fryer is able to convert that one. He has seven points. And Texas A&M Corpus Christi back on top by one. Under four to play. 
here in the first half. Normally Fry is more of a corner three-point shooting guy. It won from the one of the lower percentage shots in college basketball. How about A.J. Lawson there? The whirling dervish. Yeah. Able to jackknife through defenders and put it down. Fire with it outside. Gets it up top to Murdix. Murdix to the basket. Sweeps oh, it. Woo. Man, how about the spin on that basketball? Man, he was in a spin class. Spin cycle. <laughs> he was spinning. <laughs> Outstanding move. Double figures in each of the last six games. The whistle blows. Walker's fouled on the floor. Lab, what do you think about this spoon? This spin move. Wow. The shot maker, playmaker extraordinaire. Midair, body balance, acrobatic. Put it off the window. Timeout. Our game summary at a one-point game. Texas A&M Corpus Christi leads Texas Southern 28-27. It's not surprising, guys, that 27 of the points have come from the bench. Lab, uh, how important is it to get these bench points at this time of the year? Well, it's how their team is built. Uh, it's a democracy when you look at Texas Southern. Uh, they use their depth mm -hmm. to wear opponents down, and he doesn't feel there's, Coach Jones, that is, there's much of a let off, a let up. Good execution out of bounds play. You talked about special teams or the kicking game, the equivalent in basketball, Texas Southern excelling in that respect, Avery. Yeah, that's five points on the last two underneath out of bounds plays. And the great thing about Texas Southern, that they're not reinventing themselves. They're not having an identity crisis here in the NCAA tournament. No. They're playing in their strengths. And 17 points off the bench is no surprise, or 20 at this point with that last three by John Walker the third. Here's that missed shot on the opposite end by the Islanders. And at Farah Made fouls P.J. Henry, and he goes to the free throw line. 64% free throw shooter. Averaging 14 points per game in his last three, and he'll have a one and one opportunity. Yeah, he rattles at home. Texas Southern doing a really nice job of playing defense uh, without committing silly fouls. Turnovers obviously have hurt him a little bit, but if, if it was a blind taste test, in some ways you would think that Texas Southern, the way they started the game, would be down. Mm -hmm. They would be the, have a four-point deficit. Instead, they've just matched their largest lead. Yeah, they do it in different ways. I think part of the reason, Avery, to your point, is when the Islanders get out in transition, they're playing downhill. They have such electrifying athleticism and speed. But Texas Southern, in their own respect, playing inside, executing well, have gotten back into the game and in good position. Baramade with the handoff to Murdix. Murdix, tough pass, and it's cut off by Carl Nicholas. Jordan Carl Nicholas has played one heck of a first half for Texas Southern. A little hesitation by P.J. Henry initially. And now he'll reset the offense. Yeah, good judgment, good choice to get organized. Try and get a good one. And Walker's fouled at the free throw line. Stay tuned for AT&T at the half with Rex Chapman, Seth Davis, uh, Nabil Kareem, and Candace Parker live from Atlanta with analysis of the first half. This is where experience comes into play. Steve, you and I had the Texas Southern game last year uh, in Bloomington. That was my first time in Bloomington, as a matter of fact. What a historic venue. Mm -hmm. And John Walker was there with Texas Southern and experience. You know, he made a three, and then he decided to take his man off the bounce. Uh, experience is sometimes the best teacher. No doubt. And the continuity as well so important as you build a program build a team from season to season jalen jackson up top shot clock down close to 10 145 to play here in the first half leaves it up top for brinson into the paint foul going up and he'll get a couple free throws clock stops 142 to play in the first half and see what i love about that drive you know drive to basketball defender wasn't in what they call a legal guarding position <laughs> and he took advantage of it. Brinson 64% from the line. 
Well, that's something they do on the season, the Islanders. We talked about their ninth in the country at 22 free throw attempts, but they also convert 16 free throws per game. BR Kicks is your source for everything kicks and fits from your favorite athletes to latest drops. At BR Kicks, we are all sneakerheads. Scan the QR code to follow BR Kicks. San Antonio Brinson. I wonder where he get that name. San Antonio. <laughs> Well, he's from Thompson, Georgia, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I know a little bit about San Antonio. Yes, you do. <laughs> we'll give you some time later on to, to wax poetic about it. The whole state, for that matter. Yeah, the really. governor sitting next to me <laughs> on my right. Walker puts it on the deck, tries to knife through the defense. They're going to call an offensive foul. He thought he was getting an N1. Uh, Joe Lindsay, the veteran official, made the call. That's his second foul. Nice job here. Jalen Jackson yep. stepping in. He's done a lot of things defensively with the block shot, uh, taking the charge, disruptive with his ball pressure as well, getting under opponents. Murdix goes to the wing for Fryer down the baseline. Up top for Jackson for three, and it bounces over the backboard and out of bounds. A lot of times, on, on, in that situation where he took the charge, it depends on your defensive philosophy. A lot of teams, even in college basketball now, they don't like to help off of that strong side corner because that's the easiest three in basketball. But he gave up his body, and then offensively, you got to play off two feet and make that easy pass uh, when you're in that situation. Henry slowly started up the floor, but then a burst of speed. He has it at the logo under a minute to play. Henry gives it up top to Jordan Carl Nicholas. Outside for John Jones. His runner is no good off the side of the iron, and then he knocks it out of bounds. I think you alluded to it, Steve. Nicholas may want to leave that uh, spin move in the locker room at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> Tough to do in traffic. Tight quarters. Spin moving in the closet, not the answer. Yeah, but he's playing hard. He is. Murdix calls the timeout, 36.4 to play. Steve Lutz wants to go over things. Three gourmet chefs compete to recreate and remix celebrities' favorite late night cravings. Check out Reimagine Fast Food with a side of culinary craziness on Fast Foodies. New episodes return March 24th on True TV. Along with Avery Johnson, Steve Lavin, and John Rothstein, I'm Tom McCarthy. Steve Lutz called the timeout. Winner of this game will face Kansas. It'll be Thursday, 9.57 Eastern time. The number one seed Kansas Jayhawks who just keep on winning. Big 12 championship after Big 12 championship. Islanders, Murdix down to the corner. And whistle blows and a foul on the floor. Coach Lutz is, is upset because he took a basket away. Yeah. Right. When you come out of a situation like that, you're drawing up one of your really sweet, cute uh, ATO plays, a little bit of a stagger, misdirection action to get that roll. <laughs> and, uh, he was upset. And they did have action, so they're taking a look at the last play. It was a really well designed play, by the way. Yep, and out of a timeout. Yeah, watch Faramade after the screen slips to the basket. Well, they're lifting Texas Southern's defense as well, and they create that little foot race to the rim. I think the uh, what they're looking at, guys, is away from the basket. It wasn't where the action was. Yeah, so in situations like that, they want to force the other big defender who's normally in the low spot. They want to shift him up. They want to sh basically shift him up here. Yeah. Gene Steratore is with us. Uh, Gene, I know you're watching. What do you see here? You know what they're looking at, guys, is where the contact is on the screen. That is away from the ball, opposite side of the court. It's the run through by number two, White. I don't think it's, it rises to a flagrant, but it's a definite run through. The, the forearm hits the, uh, the screener in the chest. 
to me it's a hard foul, but it's mm -hmm. not a flagrant foul. I just have it as a common foul. Yeah. It's yep. number two on that play. Yeah, and that's why I was circling it. That's where the contact happened, and it happens to be A.J. Lawson. But they deemed that it wasn't, what, unnecessary. It was just a common foul. All right, so Jalen Jackson will go to the free throw line for a one and one. Well, Jalen Jackson rewarded for putting his nose in there, trying to put some lumber, set a screen. And again, this is what the Islanders do. Uh, they get to the foul line frequently, and they convert. No one's better than Villanova. No. This, this year, they're on track to be the greatest free throw shooting team in college basketball history. Pretty incredible. So he makes both. He has four, and it's a two-point game in favor, favor of Texas Southern. This normally up-tempo offense now can just hold it for one shot. Yeah, in a situation like this, you really don't want to start this play until you have about seven seconds. And again, let me capitalize, start. Mm -hmm. You don't want to shoot it at seven seconds because you want to get the last shot of the half. They give it off to Rossis. And his ball is fumbled into the open floor. Goes Jackson. He can't convert. And the horn sounds. And that is the end of the first half. Texas A&M Corpus Christi forced the turnovers. They didn't capitalize all half long. Well, Jalen Jackson again on that possession, indicative of the tenacious defense, the aggressive ball pressure that John the Ross. Islanders want to impose. Excuse me, Lab. John Rossi is with Johnny Jones. Well, Johnny, you're obviously frustrated by that last play. What really disappointed you? Oh, just think things happen. I wasn't sure if you got bumped or not, but we still got to be strong enough with the basketball to get a, um, a shot at the goal, especially um, there late. It's um, going into halftime. You want to finish with the momentum. Good thing we got back to Pencil and got to stop. E.J. Henry doesn't have a made field goal. He averaged 14 in the SWAC tournament. How big is it to get him going in the second half? We're excited because we know he's going to come up big is there in the second half he'll make plays uh, we kind of got out of rhythm there a little bit uh, there in the first half we know that he'll step up and play big for us here in the second half thanks have a great second half thank you Tom all right so Texas Southern John Rothstein is on top 32 30 over Texas A&M Corpus Christi a lot of action in the first half we'll send you to AT&T at the half after these messages you're watching the NCAA men's basketball championship Back uh, at the University of Dayton Arena in Dayton, Ohio. Let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. It's 32-30. Texas Southern is on top. Neither team is really shooting from beyond the arc too much to combine five for 16. Along with Avery Johnson, Steve Lavin, I'm Tom McCarthy. All right, Lab, what stands out to you? I think the bench points, 22 to 10 uh, in favor of the Tigers. And Johnny Jones using his bench very liberally in terms of the way he substitutes. They go 10 deep and trying to wear out the Islanders. Yeah, with Texas A&M and Corpus Christi, they're going to have to make some three-point shots because Texas Southern block shots have definitely been bothering them. It's been a block party for, the for Texas a <laughs> for Texas Southern. Those guys inside, Grissom, Nicholas, these guys, man, they do a great job of defending the ball, contesting without fouling, and it's going to be very important for Texas A&M Corpus Christi to knock down more than two three-pointers uh, that they made in the first half. John Rossi, what do you got, buddy? Well, Tom, Avery and Coach Steve Lutz are in the same mindset. Steve Lutz just telling me a couple of minutes ago his team has to make three-point shots to open up the Texas Southern defense. Bryson Gresham is changing everything at the front of the rim. Driving lanes will open if they can make some shots, Tom. Yeah, and Gresham only played nine minutes in the first half. In fact, there were four bench players for Texas Southern that had more minutes than four starters in tonight's game. Interchangeable pieces, yep. parts. Islanders with the basketball to begin the second half for the chance to move on to face Kansas in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Three-pointer from the left wing is no good by Fryer. And here comes Texas Southern. P.J. Henry brings it into the open floor. Carl Nicholas had a pretty good first half. He's trying to back his way in. That's a high dribble, nearly lost it. Got control, kicks it out. Miles Smith with the drive, too high off the glass. And the rebound is taken down by the Islanders. And Mushila looked like he was fouled and fouled hard. Yeah, Texas A&M Corpus Christi started at half off trying to knock down the three. You can still look for three-point shots, but you got to maybe try to get the ball in the paint first and play inside out. 
You explore other opportunities. Late clock, you can always launch a rocket. But give yourself a chance to play through the paint, get fouled, play inside out, all the good things that come from exploring a better shot. Isaac Mushila, who is the uh, newcomer of the year in the conference, all conference second team, he inbounded that basketball and then was kind of wiping his face because he got hit in the chop so much. AJ Lawson knocked the ball out of bounds for Texas Southern. There's Mushila from the Congo. Look for Jalen Jackson to be more aggressive in the second half. 13 points in their closeout game in conference tournament championship. He's the one with the basketball. He just gave it up to Keys. Shot clock is down to seven. Murdick slips it. Everybody off their feet, and there's the block shot and the foul. And we're going to get a couple of free throws for the Islanders as Keys will go to the line. Carl Nicholas called for his third personal foul, and that's something to watch, even with the depth of Texas Southern. So DeLazarus Keys averaged eight and a half points per game in conference play. 67% from the free throw line. And the first one, no good. Now, you just saw that note. They get to the line over 22 times per game which is part of their game plan. Yeah, and when you're shooting 74% as a team from the line, you, mm -hmm. you want to live there. He's and, and speaking of the Southland Conference, you know what school the commissioner, Chris Grant, graduated from? Well, I saw the smile on your face when you were talking to him today. <laughs> Southern <laughs> University. He's a Southern University <laughs> man. <laughs> and a beautiful drive to the basket by Carl Nicholas. He has six. I got to tell you, Watching film doesn't do him justice when you watch him in person. Yeah, nice versatility as well. 34 31. Mushila gives it up to Jalen Jackson. Jackson into the paint. Kicks it back outside. Jumper by Keys, no good. And here's PJ Henry leading the break. Henry right to the basket. And he tried to kick it out to AJ Lawson, but Lawson was trying to trail. Yeah, loved his drive by Nicholas. Did a nice job. He didn't resort to the spin as he did in the first half. It was just a straight power move to the basket. Well, Lab said, you know, you got to go to the locker room. You got to tell him not to spin next time. <laughs> Much more efficient there on that straight line drive. Murdoch's off the screen. Can't convert. Gresham with the rebound. Texas okay, Southern. Henry. Texas Southern really checking on the boards. Mm -hmm. uh, one and done for the Islanders. D.J. Henry dishes to the corner, and that three-pointer is good by Etienne. 31%. He has 11. Murdix snaking through the paint to Jackson, right side of the lane. And a baseline jumper by Keyes. That's a beauty. Jackson's decisions have been on point throughout. You can see why the coaching staff so impressed with the winning choices he makes at both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. Carl Nicholas, that's a tough shot, trying to get his own rebound. He's volleyballing it up. But here come the Islanders, down four. I like the push by Jackson with the head up, the vision, a little feed into the post. They go to Fryer in the corner. He wanted it for three, got it to go. But see, that was all Jalen Jackson. That's one of those hockey assists, right? You didn't get the assists, but you pass it to the man that, your teammate, and then he got the assist, but that's, he's got a good panoramic vision of the court in the half court in transition. He's doing a nice job of quarterback and the team here in the second half. And the answer by Henry, who's fouled going up. All right, so extra passes, they talked about this a lot. I like the poise with the double team, the kick out, and then the one more. So ball reversal in play. Uh, no wasted dribbles, but instead transporting the ball through the air and getting that high percentage look on the backside where the math is favorable. Yeah. B.J. Henry going to the free throw line. The Tigers five of nine from the line tonight. It's always good when the ball can access the paint either via pass, penetration. Ooh, nice friendly roll. First four coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship begins tomorrow at 7 on ESPNU.
For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Second shot for P.J. Henry. Again, Tigers with no double-figure scores, averaging no double-figure scores all season long. They have one in double figures. It's Etienne today. Well, the Islanders on the offensive ends. Sheila gives up his dribble. Jalen Jackson. You can see that Jackson, though, has a different mindset in this second half. They slip it down to the baseline to Mushila. Back at his way in. Shot clock at five, and it's blocked away by Gresham. His hands all over the place. Again, the Islanders have to be alert uh, to the size disadvantage and kick that ball out, get a better look. That wasn't a bad look by Gresham. Jalen Jackson tried to slip it. He does awkwardly, but the conversion is no good. Gresham with the rebounds. Excellent pass in that situation. A.J. Lawson count the buckets. A big swing there, a layup at one end missed, a bunny at point blank range. And Texas Southern, the Tigers get out in transition for the easy bucket. Why not take it to the hoop, absorb the foul, and finish? Timeout. There's Bryson Gresham, who's one block shy of 80 for his career. He has three tonight. He will be part of the inaugural HBCU All-Star Game Sunday, April 3rd at 4 p.m. on CBS, taking place in New Orleans, home of the Final Four at Avery's hometown. You would have been in that game, Avery, if it was back in the day. Yes, sir. When you average 13.3 assists a game, <laughs> which that record still stands today, you would choose me for that, select me for that game. Brian Custer will be on the call. Uh, the great Clark Kellogg will join me as an analyst, and A.J. Ross will handle awesome. the sideline reporting. Awesome. We're all looking forward to it. And by the way, folks, when uh, Avery, who is the most humble person I, I've met, when he's talking about the 13.3 assist lap, he did not brush anything off his shoulder in your direction, did he? None. <laughs> Lawson with the missed free throw, and the Islanders back on offense. Tennyson for three, no good. And there's Gresham with an athletic rip down with one hand. Eighth rebound on the game. Talked about the three block shots as well. Carl Nicholas tried to leave it for Gresham, he turned it over. And now the Islanders slowly bring it up the floor. Down four. Tennyson for three. Yes! Well, same spot he missed one from. Love the amnesia, the short memory. It's what shooters got to do. Lock and load, launch a rocket. Why not? Bottoms. Yeah, third team all Southland Conference player. Nice stroke. Th shoots 37% from the three point line. He's made 71 threes this year, so. It's not going to be gun shy. Carl Nicholas in the paint, leaning, and a foul is going to be called on Faramade. And it's good when you know how to relocate in situation. Here's the relocation. Defender made it a defensive mistake. Poor closeout. Hand down. Jordan Carl Nicholas to the free throw line, makes the first. Play the official men's bracket game of NCAA March Madness. The Capital One NCAA March Madness Men's Bracket Challenge is ready for your pick. So get your bracket started now at play.ncaa.com or in the March Madness Live app. On that last three-point shot with the defender, you have to close out in such a way where you're under the guy's jersey. Etienne gets that long rebound, and his basket is no good, but he's going to go to the free throw line. Lab, doesn't it feel like Texas A&M, they're just imposing their size. A Texas Southern, excuse me, is they're just po imposing their size on Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Yeah, the size at the rim, the resistance has been impressive. They're also checking on the boards and rebounding so they can get down the floor. But I think their half-court execution's been impressive, too, in terms of being patient, making the extra pass, getting organized if they don't have the numbers in the break. By the way, they're also not subbing as much, so they just subbed there with John Walker coming in, and that gives Carl Nicholas a chance to take a breather. 
And unlike in the first half, John Walker the third, it, it felt like he was going. in the game in the first 30 right. seconds <laughs> after those two turnovers to start the game. That's he had converts both free throws. He's now five for five. He has 13. Heading toward the 14-minute mark here in the second half. Four-point lead for Texas Southern. The winner advancing to Thursday's matchup against number one Kansas. I like the way Jackson surveys the floor. And Gresham with another block. Get it out. But the follow is no good by Keys. If Texas Southern boxes out like an old-fashioned team from the 1970s or 80s, Ball goes up, they turn and look for a body and put lumber on you. Here's the Gresham block shot hanging in the air. He swats it away. And see, a lot of times with shot blockers, it's also about positioning and, and vision. A lot of times we want to talk about vision of a point guard, but it's also vision of bigs. You have to be able to see man and ball and be in the right position. Walker threw some traffic as they would have slide it home. This is the largest lead of the night for Texas Southern, up 45-39. Again, an attack on the rim, an attack of the paint, a conscious effort or amplified effort by the Tigers to search for those higher percentage looks. Johnny Jones just saw Gresham pick up his second foul. And it's the third team foul of the half. What Johnny Jones say? He said, I love the fact that he has Final Four experience at the University of Houston. How about that? Just attacking is Tennyson, and it's off the front of the rim for his ninth point. Yeah, Tennyson, he drove and said, let me push this shot blocker underneath the basket with this little, what we used to call a chicken wing. I, I know you don't eat chicken, Steve. <laughs> I love breasts. I love chicken breasts. In fact, I just had some in New York. That blue ribbon downtown in Soho a couple days ago. The Gresham with the putback. I had the mashed potatoes as well with gravy. I'm a wing proud of guy. You're making me hungry, Steve. Miles Smith entry pass. And Keys off the front. So we got some action going with the big men now. That's five points for Keys. Yeah, Keys got a different temperament this second half. A little bit gun shy in the first half. Hesitant. Whoa, talk oh, about hesitation. hesitation. There it is. Henry. On point. He's got five. It's a six point game again. It's his first field goal, by the way, which is surprising. Miles Smith trying to answer, and that's a foul on PJ Henry. Hesitation, the change of pace, the stop and start, stutter step, different terminology for it, but so effective at freezing the defense and then seizing that hole, take it to the daylight, get a bucket. Miles Smith to the line, missed the first one. And it's interesting with teams how they start practice. Some teams start practices off with defensive drills and slides and closeouts and rebounding, and then others start practices off with ball handling and passing and skill development. And that looks like a picture-perfect skill development type pre-practice or start of practice move. No doubt. The way he sat down, low with the ball as well, close to the floor. By the way, you saw Gresham went off. Rossis is back in for the first time in this half. P.J. Henry working off the high screen. Walker wanted a quick handoff, but it wasn't as quick as he would like. Uh, to the basket is Etienne, and the ball is knocked away. The Islanders down five. Nice crossover. Well, Key should have rolled a little bit faster mm -hmm. initially on that play. Bounce pass. Down low to Keys. Keys underneath has it blocked away. And here come the Tigers in transition. B.J. Henry to the corner for three. It's no good. And the offensive board and the putback no good by Lawson. Good pace here, high octane. Both teams looking to push it early offense. Tennyson for three, he cans it again. How about it? Gets great lift, his feet are organized, flexion, trajectory, and follow through all on point. Well, he has 12. He's now two of four from beyond the arc. And it's great that Coach Lux talked to John Rothstein coming out of half that they confirmed what, what we already thought. 
Texas A&M Corpus Christi, they're gonna have to knock down some threes all the way from the island of Corpus Christi. Our tournament summary, seven teams from Texas in the field, including the two tonight and on this date. Coach K wins first NCAA tournament game at Duke, March 15th, 1985. We were all talking about where we were at that point. I was a junior in high school. Avery, what'd you say you were? You were? I was a sophomore in college. Yeah, and Lav? I was a junior in college. Yeah. Lav, the elder statesman. Rub it in. Yeah. The only problem with that graphic is people, the fans can potentially guess our age. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Islanders down two. Got a chance to tie it or take the lead as we head toward 11 minutes to play here in the second half for a chance to move on to face Kansas in the first round. See if they play through the hot hand. Little NBA flavor. Taking their time here executing, but right back to the hot hand. And there it is, tennis in Kansas, third one. It's the first lead since 326 to play in the first half for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Yeah, I've been so impressed coming out of timeouts with Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Just their action. They know exactly where they want the ball to go. They're four of six, Avery, in the second half from the three-point line, starting to light it up from behind the arc. And then you have to know in a situation like this, when you're guarding a screener, you have to get up on that screen just in case you may need to have an emergency switch. Mm -hmm. You can't be in no man's land in that situation. I like the spacing there, a little two-man game stretched in the deep corner, but lifted enough where there was the back cut option if he was overplayed or denied, so it gave him an option to either catch and shoot or basket cut. John, what did you hear before? Well, Johnny Jones, guys, is telling his guys to protect the paint on defense. That's a priority. Obviously, the strength of Texas Southern is the shot blocking. Four block shots already tonight for Bryson Gresham, six as a team. Mm. Offensively, he wants them to drive, try to get easy baskets, Tom. Yeah, so far it's uh, the Islanders are getting some easy baskets recently. Shot clock is at five. They try to lean it in. The pinball goes to Murdix. Murdix gets the bounce off the side of the rim. It's a three-point Islanders lead. Impressive body control by Murdix. Hung in the air. Some contact still finishes. Wow, how about that answer by Etienne? When you're talking about body control and strength and shield, sheer will to just finished that play and muscled that basket in. He has 15 points. Fryer pulls up inside the arc. Ball's tipped around. And the rebound is taken down by Johnny Walker. P.J. Henry quickly up the floor. And his pass is cut off. For Amade got some hands and some legs on it. And now the foul on P.J. Henry at midcourt. Johnny Jones can't believe it. Play the official men's bracket game of NCAA March Madness. The Capital One NCAA March Madness Men's Bracket Challenge is ready for your picks. So get your bracket started now at play.ncaa.com or in the March Madness Live app. Well, they both had hands on each other. Thirteen turnovers tonight for Texas Southern. Baramade. Got his hand off the jail and Jackson tipped for a moment. They leave it up top for Smith. Miss jumper is good. He cans the three pointer. It's a four point game, 55 51. Miles Smith, 31% from beyond the arc. Got a foul called on Smith. It's just amazing um, how lost on the weak side with some of the Texas Southern. Defenders here, you know, in that situation, <laughs> Walker's in no man's land. Islanders have taken the lead. Timeout called by Texas Southern. Texas A&M Corpus Christi is on top by four, 55-51. It's a 12 to two run over the last three minutes plus. As we take a look at our game summary. Etienne with 15 points, Tennyson with 15 points. Wyoming is waiting. They'll be the home team against the Indiana Hoosiers. That's coming up next. Let's check in with John Rothstein, John. Well, Tom, Steve Lutz and Texas A&M Corpus Christi are composed and confident in their huddle. Steve Lutz trying to continue to run offense and get things going away from the rim. 
Very composed, very confident, Tom. Well, I'll tell you what, you want confidence. How about the shots that are being blocked by Texas Southern here tonight? Yeah, and A.J. Lawson did quit on that play, was unsuccessful on the offensive end, didn't complain, didn't pout, got back and made a incredible block. That's what March Madness is all about. And B.J. Henry with a boardwalk shot. He just tossed it up as he curled through the paint. He has seven. It's a two-point game. Eight minutes to play in the second half. Fryer up top. Faramade leaves it underneath for the slicing Tennyson. He lays it in with his left hand. 7.49 to play in the second half. Action on the floor here in Dayton. Well, Avery, I know you, you like what Travion Tennyson's been doing here. Yeah, and it's just like he's getting his shots individually when he thinks he can win his individual matchup. Obviously, he's shooting the three better, he's taking the ball to the basket, and then when the defense makes a mistake off of those staggered screens, he's making a defense pay. Yeah, impressive that he's not settling for threes. His movement without the basketball, using his teammates to free himself up for jump shots. We saw the back cut against the overplay. The dribble drives, complete package. A little full court pressure by the Islanders off this timeout. A timeout because there was moisture on the floor, so it turned out to be our under eight timeout. Texas Southern with the basketball heading to the basket. John Walker is fouled going up. We mentioned the winner of this game moves on to face number one Kansas. How about that other matchup on Thursday? San Diego State against Creighton. Well, two stout defensive teams. Coach McDermott through the years known more for his offense and the let it fly approach, get down the floor, lock and load, shoot threes. This team more stout has improved, is the number one defense in the Big East. And of course, San Diego State for years under Steve Fisher and now Brian Dutcher have been regular participants in the tournament because of defense. Yeah. In fact, Steve Lutz, uh, who was under McDermott at Creighton as an assistant coach, as the second shot is good by Walker. He'll check out. Jordan Carl Nicholas checks it, checks in. Steve said that what Greg McDermott taught him is don't put anyone in your locker room. You wouldn't have play with your son. So that's what he tries to do from a recruiting standpoint. He said, I went with all these JUCOs. He said, because I know that if I had five star guys, they wouldn't want to take bus trips. <laughs> What, you, what is he talking about, eating hamburgers yeah, after exactly. all game? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a three-pointer. It's no good off the back of the iron by Simeon Fryer. I like the change of defense by Johnny Jones. Full court pressure out of that timeout. Just giving different looks again in the paint. And Big see, fella going to work. And that's the Jordan contrast. Carl Nicholas. And that's the contrast with coaches. You know, Coach Lutz's first job. Doing a nice job, been a long time assistant coach and coach Johnny Jones. A couple of different stops, LSU. Yeah, Rondi and, and Ran uh, Randy Peel, yeah. the assistant coach also for Coach Jones, a great defensive mind that had success as a head coach. So that says a lot about Johnny Jones being secure in his coaching and in himself to be able to hire former head coaches. 59-57. Keys just made that bucket to break the 57 all tie. 6.15 to play here in the second half. They go up top to Gresham. Gresham right back to Etienne. And Etienne is able to convert. And Gresham, I love the way he runs the yes. floor. Yes. How about this answer? Wow. Simeon Fryer flying into the basket. He has 12. Well, that's taking the team's basket away with one of your own by getting the ball inbounds like the old Celtics or Laker teams. They're down the floor and scoring on you in a split second. But that's rep. That's practiced. I think it's also important when you don't celebrate after a basket. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no time. Not in this day and age. Henry gives it up to Lawson. Back to Henry. Thought about a three. Now fires a three. High arcing shot. No good. But he's fouled by Murdix and he'll go to the free throw line. He'll get three shots. That's the third foul on Murdix. Yeah, nice pass ahead here. Good shield inside by Keys. Legal shield. Yeah, crafty like the old Green Bay Packers under Vince Lombardi there. Nothing wrong with a little. 
<laughs> Blocking, screening, creating space for your teammate. Pedri, a four of five from the free throw line. The key is disguising it as a post up, which is what Keyes tried to do there. And now the second shot. It's good. He'll get a third. What do you got there, John? It's a, a good omen that Simeon Fryer is now hit double figures and beyond. Guys, this season, when Simeon Fryer scores in double figures, Texas A&M Corpus Christi is 9-3, and three, Tom. Yeah, he averages 8.5 per game. Third shot by P.J. Henry is good. So 62-61. Five and a half to play. Murdick springs it up. He's got some length on him and A.J. Lawson covering him up top. Sheila. Now whistle blows and there's going to be a foul on Gresham. A little hand checking foul. That's his third. Yeah, and that's the fouls that you really don't want. You know, Keyes is in a situation where he's not even looking to be a scoring threat. And, and at the start of the second half, you want to either both teams are talking about getting in the bonus quickly, offensively, and staying out of the defense. Mm -hmm. Bushila doesn't take the shot. Shot clock is under 10. Jalen Jackson up top. I think he just peered and looks. They get it to the cutting Tennyson. Shot clock is at two. They don't realize it. And they let it fly. No good. And a shot clock violation. Good defense there by the Tigers showing a crowd on Tennyson when he tried to turn that corner almost like eight in the box and football showing three jerseys no room and three on the ball you've got to get rid of it in that situation but give Texas Southern credit we'll see how Texas A&M Corpus Christi make the adjustment when they're in that situation the next time Walker knife through some defense just threw it up what aggression to clean it up he does not and now Walker tries to do the same. He can't do it. And the Islanders with the rebound. How many times did that ball roll off the rim? Jalen Jackson splits the defense. Blocked away by Gresham. Another one. A.J. Lawson into the open floor. Right to the cup. Gets the roll. Wow. Defense. Great. The runouts again the for six. Texas Southern. 64-61. Well, if there were any jitters in the first half, there's none in the second half for anybody. Mushila up top to Jalen Jackson, under four minutes to play. A&M Corpus Christi, they can't afford to play on one side. The ball has never made it reverse to the left side of the floor. How about this? Jalen Jackson finally realized that the clock was winding down. Murdix just threw it up, and the rebound by Southern. Gresham now with 13 rebounds in this ball game for Texas Southern. And some smothering defense here by the Tigers in recent possessions, tied together, using their length, checking on the boards, not giving up those second shot opportunities. Bushila called for that foul. Yeah, Big Gresham, he's having a block party here in Dayton. I'm glad he invited us to the block party <laughs> because during this time of the year in March Madness, we're going to party like it's 1999. Our game reset. Three timeouts left for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Two for Texas Southern. 64-61, Kelly Jones. <laughs> Johnny Jones has been around for a long time, so these moments, I don't know if Kelly's used to them or not, but it's probably a little easier. Meanwhile, Steve Lutz's wife, uh, Shannon, you know, this is uh, his first chance to the NCAA tournament as a head coach. He said his son Jackson, he loves the fact that his dad is the head man, kind of gets the run of the arena during practices and things. On both wives, very poised. Late in the game, they've had practice mm -hmm. at being the most important person when it comes to a basketball program. The wife, John Walker, made the first one. John was uh, Johnny Jones composed? No, Tom. He was fired up beyond <laughs> belief. He can taste an NCAA tournament win. He kept hitting the clipboard and telling his team one thing: guys, we're under four minutes. It's winning time. Yeah. Tom. Five point lead after the two made free throws. They're getting better from the free throw line. They're 14 of 23. 
Now they're 67% for the year, and tonight they're at 61%, so a little down, but they were in the 50s before. The ball's tipped out, and then here comes A.J. Lawson. Oh, oh, that was almost a backboard. E.J. Henry was able to speed across the timeline. In these last three minutes, you got to play defense, both teams without fouling, rebound, but you got to have really clean execution on the offensive end. You like that shot, Lav, from the high post right side? You know, could have continued to explore, but it's not a bad shot by any means. But uh, getting deeper in the possession, quality possessions, which Coach Avery just touched on, and mm -hmm. keep in mind, free throws, advantage goes to the Islanders, and they're going to get two on that possession. And that's what happens when you turn down some jumpers and you look to explore with the dribble into the paint or feed in the post, uh, good things happen. And they're a 74% 74, 74 free throw shooting team. And as we chronicled earlier, uh, they get to the line 22 times a game, and they make, I jinxed them, 20, 16 free throws per game. Yeah, this is kind of a, a different <laughs> night for them. They're 6 of 14 from the free throw line. Oh, NCAA tournament. I guess so. Different conditions. Tennyson missed one, made one. And he has 18. He'll take a breather. Jalen Jackson will come in. He's not going to sit for long, I would think, right? No, not going to sit long. And and you know the beauty of the first four this year, because of UCLA last year, a lot of these teams in the first four are thinking, hey, D, we got Absolutely. We have a shot. No doubt. John Walker got a little lucky on that inbounds. He wanted to lean it into P.J. Henry. He bounced it off his fanny. Bounced well done. Up. Yeah. Talk about resourcefulness and ingenuity on the fly. <laughs> Normally that happens when it's on your side of the court. Right. <laughs> and you turn it into a score. P.J. Henry draws the foul. With 2.12 to play. Here we go. Well, coach is going to be taking notes on this new inbound play. It's going to become a trend around the country. Almost a shot fake into a pass off a of fanny of his teammate. Yeah. And then ready to take it coast to coast. How about that? I like his spirit and confidence. You can try that 10 more times and you will be over 10 and, and regaining the ball. <laughs> well, Tennyson's back in. Jalen Jackson checks out. Also back in is Miles Smith who has the sixth most minutes played in Texas A&M Corpus Christi history. P.J. Henry to the free throw line. Steve, why we didn't have as much fun coaching as we're having now? Because we're undefeated. <laughs> and we're working with time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All he looks did. like an important man, and he is an important man. I, we did hear that As today. As someone yeah. earlier today pointed out in the parking lot on the way into the arena, <laughs> you look like an important man. Every <laughs> second shot. Coach Avery said, what does that say about us? 67-62. <laughs> See the foul trouble. It'll be interesting to see here in the final minutes if experience is a factor as well. Texas Southern are more experienced teams. Islanders not as experienced. And the big shot blocker addressing. He's in foul trouble. Four fouls. Timeout. 151 to play for a chance to play number one Kansas. Each team now has two timeouts left after uh, Texas State and Corpus Christi used one there. It's a five point game. Shot clock is at 10. What are you guys thinking as coaches here? I think both teams, you know, want to. Do the things that allowed them to be successful this past week in their conference tournaments, uh, as well as closing strong on their season. And it's about concepts. You know, you can run a set, but if it gets taken away, you've got to be able to play basketball, make choices and decisions. And defensively, uh, you got to lock in to your baseline defensively as well. Yeah, and tough twos on defense. You don't want to Going at easy threes. Murdex gives that gives that one up with two on the shot clock, and the Islanders, oh, they fumble the rebound out of bounds. The Lazarus Keys had it, and he just couldn't hold on. As you see the battle for the board. Give Keys credit. He went after this rebound with two hands. It wasn't a one-handed attempt, so his heart was in the right place. Jalen Jackson nearly stole that one. He fell off the baseline. On a pass intended to, for Etienne. Now look at this strategy 
from an offensive press break situation. A lot of teams like to bring all five players up. Here at Texas Southern, they only want two of their players. <laughs> they have to think about implementing They may bring a, a third, strategy. yeah. <laughs> and it, even if you flash someone to the middle, almost like a tight end in football, when a quarterback is under duress or pressure, they'll have a chance to talk about it because there's a timeout, little skull session. Johnny Jones called that timeout, so he's down to one. How about this, guys? He has 46 points from his bench tonight. 52 is the season high against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Well, he adjusts to his personnel. Yeah. And he has a deep bench, so he rotates them liberally as we take a look at what's at stake. Yeah, chance to move on to take on number one, Kansas. And A.J. Lawson's role is critically important here as an inbounder making sure that he makes an on time on target pass and then the receivers they got to get open yeah, he backed up the spacing of the tandem with guards to give them a chance to make a secondary cut not run out of space along the baseline yeah, and I, good adjustment yeah and i thought pj henry got away with a little push maybe off yep. there on jalen jackson jackson is trying to beat his back pocket down five and mm. there's the foul on jalen jackson not what the Islanders would have preferred. You know, if you get a steal, a five-second count in the backcourt, but once it's inbounded, now you want to foul right away, not let them use that many seconds, and then foul because clock management's so critical coming down the home stretch. Yeah, and if it's 10 seconds on the clock and he's 30 feet from the basket, just play on, play on. And in that situation, P.J. Henry was close to the sideline. Now you're bringing another defender, the sideline, into play. Yeah, these are big free throws. Henry makes the first one. He's now 8 of 10. He is 12. Now, Coach Avery mentioned it last year. We called the NCAA tournament game with Texas Southern down in Bloomington at Assembly Hall. And so the experience here no doubt and on the flip side the Islanders it's new territory uh, they're building a program and what a great first season but uh, that seems to be showing up uh, here in the second half the experience of Texas Southern well with 115 to play in the second half it's the largest lead of the night for Texas Southern 69 62 Tennyson lets that one go and it's off the side of the rim in the backboard and the rebound easily pulled down by John Walker and the Islanders now feel like they have to foul down seven. Yeah, in that situation on the last play, just depends philosophically, you know, what you're comfortable with. Coach Lutz knows his team. Um, you know, some teams like to go for a quick two, get downhill, try to get a traditional, traditional three-point play at the basket, but that was a set play for a three-point shot. Well, there you see Texas Southern, the previous two trips to the first four, they won. Under Mike Davis first and then Johnny Jones last year. Etienne cans the first free throw. He has 18 points. You think of all the basketball Johnny Jones has seen in his career as a player, as an assistant, as a head coach. And that basketball action is so important when you step into the postseason and your players feed off that poise and composure and what a bright future coach Metz has yeah when I was coaching uh, the Mav Dallas Mavericks I had a uphand and front row look at uh, Johnny Jones when he was at North Texas he did an incredible job at North Texas well guys we talk about the bench scoring and how good it's been how about what Etienne has done off the bench 19 points for Texas Southern stepping up down and ready good shot preparation here Taking it right to the hole in traffic between defenders again. Puts one down off the window. Maneuvers at a pace where he can make good judgments. He's still under control. Uh, we've given a lot of love to Coach Jones and well-deserved. Uh, but Coach Lutz matched Iowa State this year. 18-game turnaround. Yep. And his ability to change the roster, bring in new personnel, junior college players, as well uh, got it done and uh, what a bright future he has yes and coach Lutz was you know a GA and incarnate word with coach Chris Beard from Texas when 
You know, back in the San Antonio days, Danny Casper. Yep, said he borrowed a lot of his defensive concepts from Coach Casper and McDermott and Painter really influenced him, him, influence him with the offensive side of the ball. All right, so the Islanders off this timeout under a minute to play. Everything's hedged out. Murdix goes to the basket. He's fouled going up, so he'll get two free throws with 53.5 to play. So that was a nice job of making the decision that they were going to clear the entire left side out to get downhill. Well, pick up that foul and you stop the clock as well. Now you can set your defense after these free throws if they convert. Now going back to Coach Lutz for a moment, at his press conference, he was bold and said, NCAA tournament possible this year. Right. And throughout the year, he stayed with that narrative. One of those, if you can, you know, believe it, conceive it to begin with, believe it, uh, then you can achieve it. And uh, that's exactly what they did in year one. Yeah, Murdoch's missed one, made one. The problem is tonight, Texas Southern's defense has been better against the Islanders, particularly the last six minutes. No field goals for the Islanders in the last six minutes of this game. Well, the size and the length, and they also cooled down Tennyson, uh, showed him more of a crowd, stayed attached. They were really aware as a team defensively about shutting the water off of Tennyson. Well, to the free throw line is John Walker. And he gets the roll. So how about this second half? You know, we talked about how they struggled from the free throw line early on. Five for nine in the first half. They're 17 of 21 in the second half from the free throw line. They flipped the script. They yeah, sure because did. Because the strength of the Islanders all year has been the free throw battle. And we talked to Texas Southern about, hey, you want to defend the three-point line rebound? I said, no, number one point of emphasis is keeping Texas A&M Corpus Christi off the free throw line. Mm -hmm. They keep this one alive. From the corner, it's Murdix for three. He got it to go. And there's the last timeout called by Texas A&M Corpus Christi as Murdix now has 10. And the lead is seven with 38 seconds left to play. And one of the rare breakdowns defensively in the second half for Texas Southern, but well devised and well executed by the Islanders. It's been about five and a half minutes since the last field goal. All right, so the award or the reward is number one Kansas. Uh, it's, that's a hefty task. Yeah, but. That's what March Madness is sure all is. about. Uh, Kansas will be the heavy favorite. And uh, Texas Southern is going to be on a high. They're ready. Ernie Banks, let's play two. <laughs> uh, when you're in a good place and you're rolling as they have been of late, uh, you can't wait to play. Yeah. And what Coach Jones talked about was, you know, the kind of that secret weapon that's not really a secret anymore. Bryson Gresham. <laughs> size. That's size. That's Big 12 caliber size and length. And when you put Jordan Cole, Nicholas, and then you are bringing John Walker off the bench, experience, playing in a Power Five conference, and they're not going to back down from anybody. You no, know, and then complemented by the perimeter attack, who've all represented well tonight, but P.J. Henry and A.J. Lawson. All right, so the Islanders down seven, 73 66, 38 seconds left. Use the last timeout. Uh, put your coaching hat on here, guys. What do you think is going to have to happen? Well, well Texas AM Corpus Christi is saying, guys, don't count us out. We still got 38 seconds. Uh, you got to switch, same size here in the backcourt, switch and deny. You want to try to make them throw the ball a little bit over the top to some of these guards here in the backcourt. They try and get a lollipop pass, soft lob pass, and be picked off. Well, there you go. There it is. It's picked off. Jalen Jackson to the rim, and he's fouled going up. So the clock barely ticks off, and they'll go back to the free throw line, and a couple made free throws could cut this. And that's the worst place to inbound the ball deep in the corner near Texas A&M Corpus Christi's bench. Outstanding uh, interception there by Jalen Jackson. This game's not over. Yeah, so he's two for two tonight. He makes these two. It's a five-point game. And keep in mind, going back to the press offense, I think 
Coach Jones brings a third receiver up the floor just because the numbers right now are not favoring a, no. a press attack. Uh, yeah. You, you want to get more people up here to potentially receive the inbound pass. Maybe even someone tall you can throw it to above, up high, like a tight end. Yeah, and in this situation, you know, you can sub out your center. And now we have three. Yeah, two possession and game. Rebounder makes four. And they tip it again. It's loose. Jalen Jackson underneath slips it in off the glass. No good. Ball's tipped around. And the rebound is taken down by Etienne, who's fouled. Oh, man. Tough break for the Islanders. Pitch a perfect press defense here. Created another steal. Unfortunately, this left handed shot didn't go in. Poor execution here at, by Texas A&M. That could have been a foul. Yeah, John Walker looked like he was yeah. body to body. Wow. So Etienne, seven for seven from the line tonight. Eight for eight. He has 20. 22 is his season high. You're seeing that speed, cat quick speed, ball pressure by the Islanders uh, really disrupting, not allowing. Texas Southern to get the ball in bounds. There's a pretty big difference uh, in free throws attempted and made tonight. Look at that. 19 seconds left. Tennyson can't can the three. Now the rebound is taken down by PJ Henry, who's fouled from behind. I know you showed the families earlier, yeah. but when that game got down to five points, boy, you could see the families. They were all biting their nails. She's Not breathing. anymore. Kelly's breathing a little easier now. Yeah. By the way, Murdoch's just fouled out. How about P.J. Henry? Nine of 11 from the foul line. Opportunity to make two more here. That's how you close out a game with your free throw shooting, like the short game in golf. Yeah, they're, they're 20 of 24 in the second half from the free throw line. And he just missed that one. We've had three broadcasting jinxes tonight. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> well, Steve Lutz's team, 5 and 19 a season ago. He took over. And all of his recruiting, as John Rothstein said earlier, was on Zoom, FaceTime. What a turnaround. Well, you could tell, speaking with him yesterday at practice, how proud he is yeah. Yeah. of this group. And that means everyone. The buy-in was there, establishing the culture in year one, and really shocking the world in terms of college basketball. That ball was tipped. And now the last seven seconds will run off the clock in Texas Southern for the second straight year. The third consecutive time that they've ventured into the first four will move on to the first rounds of the NCAA tournament. And they will take on number one, Kansas. They win it 76 to 67, and they won it at the free throw line in the second half. All right, so update your bracket, everybody. Number one, Kansas will face number 16, Texas Southern, Thursday in Fort Worth, Texas at 9.57 Eastern time. All right, John Rothstein, take it away. Well, Johnny, congratulations on a great victory. How did you get separation down the stretch? Well, the guys continued to play extremely hard on both ends of the floor. I thought defensively we got the necessary stops here. We were able to open the floor up on the offensive end, had some driving lanes uh, for Walker, and I thought we made enough plays down there, but then we were able to finish it off getting to the free throw line, knocking down free throws. The next game is Kansas, but it's in your home state of Fort of Texas. What does it mean for Texas Southern to play a game in Fort Worth close to home? Oh, I can't tell you how excited you know we are to, to get back to Fort Worth area and Dallas area. It's an area where our fans are going to be able to come. We'll certainly have our share. Uh, Kansas is a fantastic ba basketball team. Bill Self has done a tremendous job over the years. Great tradition uh, in their program, but it's something that our players are really looking forward to and certainly wel welcome the opportunity that's presented itself because of the play here tonight. Thanks. All the best moving forward. Thank you, John. Tom. 26 of 35 for the free throw line, 74%, 21 of 26 in the second half.
They win it to advance 76 67. The first four continues later with Indiana versus Wyoming. Coming up next, we'll send you to our Atlanta studio after these messages. Come on back to Dayton in just a little bit.